What's up guys? Uh, so in this video, we're gonna do some hydro dipping. Um, like I said in the last video, without a paint booth, this is a huge pain in the butt, but, but, but I knew I was going to say but, but. The guy that I'm doing these parts for over the last uh, year and a half, he's brought me thousands of dollars in business. And so I'm hoping this is kind of the last batch of his stuff. And he's brought me a lot of money. He's paid for my shop rent, you know, months in a row by himself. So I owe it to him to get some of this done. So what we're doing today, is um, during the next couple days, two go-kart floor pans, an Evo 10 intercooler pipe, and then a go-kart wheel and a go-kart engine engine cover. Since this hopefully is one of the last hydro dip videos until I move shops and we can actually get another paint booth set up, uh, I'm gonna kind of walk you through a little bit more and show you why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm not gonna show me sanding for three hours, but I'm just gonna kind of show you why I do what I do. So all of these parts are going to be carbon fiber, so nothing crazy and loud. Um, but the carbon that I have and the way I've been able to do it, it's really clean. And if you didn't know any better, uh, it would fool you to being real carbon fiber. So on a part like this, it is really difficult to get it to wrap all the way around. And it's basically impossible, so we're not going to do that. If it was just this center section where it's flat, I could roll it through the graphic and get it to wrap all the way around. But because of that bend and that bend, not gonna happen. So the part that's facing you is the top. So it'll sit on the engine, something like that. So all you're really gonna see is that top part and the sides. So what I do for something like this is I basically dip it flat. And then since this end sticks up a little higher than that one, that one's gonna wrap around. And then th once it's underwater, I'll dip it down like such. And that'll basically cover everything you're gonna see. The graphic's gonna come around a little bit further than where my fingers can stretch. The nice thing too about this carbon is the base color is black. So where the carbon doesn't stretch or where it doesn't go all the way around, the carbon does a really good job at stretching. So it'll go all the way around, stretch, 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 and then finally break apart. Where it does break apart, one, you're not gonna see it. Two, if you could see it, it looks like a shadow. We're gonna start prepping these. I'll kind of show you what I use, why I use it, blah, 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 blah. And then we'll get into the, the rest of the stuffs. So first on the list is my preferred method of prepping. These are nylon uh, wire wheels. Uh, so two benefits, they don't scratch into the metal. There are different grits. So this is, uh, I think about 200 and then there's an, a 180 and then like a 300. So this is, uh, this is the one I prefer. Uh, it is used and worn down, but uh, it does a good job. I forgot the story, but basically I already prepped this wheel. So I just have to take the green off of this. And then there's still my epoxy primer underneath. These are pretty clean. He cleaned them up nice for me. I'm just going to run over them, get any crud off, and then we'll uh, degrease them and wash them. This, because it's nice and shiny. Sorry, you're seeing my trash. Um, because it's so smooth and polished, we do need to go over, even though it's clean, we need to go over all of it and just get a good little... Uh, just get some marks like that on there so the primer has something to grab to. So we're gonna get to that right now. So because this metal was so polished, I went ahead and started hand sanding it with 220 just to really rough it up. And then I'm gonna go back over it with the wire wheel just to kind of solidify any spots that I missed. But it was, it was so polished that the, the wire wheel really wasn't doing what I wanted to. So I just hit it with the sandpaper real quick, ran out of battery, and uh, <laughs> kept going. So originally on these wheels, I said I was going to take it down to the primer. Uh, once I started hitting it with the wire wheel, I realized that it actually bonded really well to the primer I did previously. So I just continued to knock it down and uh, took some spots down to the primer, but we're really just focusing on getting it rough. Um, these Briggs and Stratton covers, whatever paint they used, uh, I've noticed it, it bonds really well to the metal and it takes good of the primer. So I'm really just focusing on roughing it up and getting any rock chips out. And then these go-kart floor pans were a cakewalk. But in real time, that took about an hour and a half to prep those pieces. Um, so the next step is to basically put all those in my glorified bathtub. And then I use a soap detergent because it degreases. And then I also use a scotch Bright. What this does is, well, one, it helps to clean. Two, it kind of is like a reassurance um, since it is rough and kind of going over, especially on the shiny metal, on the clean, smooth stuff. This is just kind of like a reassurance that I can, you know, just go over it once again with a light sandpaper, basically. Um, 
Also, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, we still have a ton of t-shirts left, so I'm plugging our website right now. Um, if you guys could go on there, if you haven't bought a shirt, they're the same shirts that I talked about a month ago. If you have already bought a shirt, don't buy another shirt. But if you haven't, go on there, because that will help me buy a new work shirt, because uh, this one has seen better days. Thank you. So this part is very self-explanatory. I'm using dish soap, an off-brand dish soap at that, and a Scotch-Brite pad to uh, just clean the parts and degrease and go over them one last time. I've used that specific combo for the entirety of my business, so a little over five years. Never had any issues with it. It's nice and cheap. And then on this intercooler pipe, one side is the V-band, uh, so we're just taping that off to make sure paint doesn't get in it. And the other side, because yeah you have to excuse <laughs> this used to be where i painted stuff and now it's just where or where i mix paint now it's just where i put stuff um so uh for the primer we're using this uh tamco epoxy primer and it is by far the best thing i have used for bare metal stuff it grabs really well um little goes a long ways it goes on really thin um in my opinion this is uh easier to run than clear coat that's from what I've noticed. I don't even put reducer in it because it's so thin and runny. So um, that's what we're doing for the primer. All the parts are over there on the table. As you can see, there's stuff everywhere. This is why I don't like doing this anymore. But so this is what we're using. Uh, mix ratio is one to one. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and then uh, we'll whip out the old Harbor Freight spray gun here. Hopefully it's not clogged and uh, we'll shoot some primer real quick. So like I said, this primer goes on really thin. It's really tough. It's an epoxy primer, so it, it makes a nice hardened shell. Um, you can spray up to, I think, seven days without touching it. And then for the black, we're just using uh, VHT high temp. It works really well with the hydrographics and uh, it likes the primer, never had issues with it. So why argue? And now on to cutting and taping the film. Um, I have like six or seven different si set sizes uh, that I use for my tank to divide, so I have to cut the film to fit those specific sizes. Um, you tape the edges just so it doesn't roll in on itself. Uh, some people can, they've, I've heard that they'll like cut the ends, just a ton of little slits, and that does the same thing, but this works for me, it's easier. So <laughs> like I said, like, you know, if it works, why change it? would also like to point out that you don't need fancy tape that's walmart like 89 cent rolls of tape um so for the activator this is a specific activator to the brand of the carbon fiber um i do about three passes kind of light overlapping each other um and then the dipping i mean it's pretty straightforward certain pieces like these wheels took a long time uh for me to actually get kind of the process down because if you notice I went really far in before going down and that just allowed the the film to go all the way in the wheel um, but I didn't know that for like the first two sets I did for this guy and uh, so they've definitely gotten better um, if you guys do when you're laying the film down if you guys do get any air bubbles uh, you can blow them out or use your finger real lightly and just kind of push them off to the side or out of the film um, again self-explanatory here certain parts like that are tricky though because there's when there's so much contour and you're trying to get i mean that's a goofy shape so you kind of got to learn how to just how to manipulate it in the water and kind of get it to do what you want uh when you're rinsing these off very straightforward um you'll notice right there there was kind of some suds almost and basically when it's done being rinsed those suds will kind of go away and the film will get a dull finish over it my tank is disgusting. Ooh, very nice. So again, uh, same activator, same film, doing about three passes overlapping the other. You wanna be careful here because you, if you put too much activator on it, it will cause the film to basically melt through itself. Um, so you'll 
you'll get the hang of that. And then on my gun, that's another Harbor Freight spray gun, um, and it leaks like a sieve. And so if any of that activator drops on the film, it basically creates a hole in the film, and you're in trouble, got to start over. So that's why I had that paper towel in front of it because <laughs> it catch all, catches all the drips. It's, I mean, it works, and uh, I don't really feel like spending, you know, two, three hundred dollars on a paint gun just to spray the activator. So, it is what it is. Um, bigger pieces like this, I think this is for the intercooler pipe, um, and that's actually not huge, but those do get scary because if you do screw them up, you get water on top. I mean, that's potentially, you know, that's probably like a ten dollar piece of film. So on ones where I've filled the entire tank, you know, like I've dipped doors before and fenders and like. That's nerve wracking because at that point, like if you screw up, it's 50 bucks out the door done. So I'm not a huge fan of doing that. So like I said in the beginning, we're going straight down on this and we're going to try and get it to wrap all the way around and it actually does a really good job. The only negative to going straight down like that is air bubbles will normally get trapped right on the top where you first plant it in the water. That's why you see most people on most parts going in at an angle. So if you saw right there how the graphic came up and like met right at the top. So that's where it met all the way around. And then on the other end where the bend was a little taller, uh, I'll show you later, it kind of kind of missed. But the whole, all the visible parts that you're going to see are, they look great. Um, so again, rinsing, see all those suds, right? Yeah, there's a good shot. So all that bubbly stuff kind of goes away. It almost looks like soap residue. Um, so you just want to keep doing that. Keep rinsing it until that goes away. You can also touch the the part real lightly. Um, if there's a slime on it still, then you gotta keep rinsing it. Okay guys, sorry I gotta talk over my heater, so I don't know if I'm talking too loud or too quiet. Basically, here's the deal. Uh, if I, so normally I would let these sit overnight and then clear them the next day. Um, basically, my shop has been shut down to do this, uh, today's the third day, like two and a half days, whatever. So basically what I'm thinking is, if I just stay late, I air dried all those off, if I let those, my heaters turn all the way up, so in about 30 minutes, it'll be like 90 degrees in here. If I just let these set for about an hour, they're dry now, but just let them set for an hour, let all the uh, chemical gases kind of air out, um, and then I'll clear them tonight, that way I will be able to move them into the front room tomorrow, they'll be dry enough to be able to sit in there uh, my biggest concern is the intercooler pipe, just because there's not really a nice way to sit that, so I didn't want to risk moving that tomorrow a couple of hours after I clear it. I'd rather let it sit for like 12 hours uh, before I come back here tomorrow. So um, everything actually turned out uh, quite well. I was really nervous, as I may have already said, because I haven't done this in a while. So uh, super nervous for that one, but it actually came out swimmingly. Um, some of these watermarks and stuff that you see will go away with the clear. Um, Will turn out good, that turned out good, that turned out good. Um, this actually, it's gonna be hard to hard to see, but it actually wrapped all the way under, except for right here and then down is where it opened up. You can see this line right there. And then, uh, but the rest of this, it actually went through and touched. So I'll try and get a better shot of that tomorrow. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go get some late night food. It's about 10 o'clock now, so I probably won't start clearing until about 11. Um, so I'm gonna let these sit, go get some food, and uh, then we'll clear them. Just kidding. Okay, floor is wet. It's really warm in here. It's it's got to be like 85 degrees in here right now. That heater does wonders. Um, so these have been sitting for a little over an hour. So um, I'm going to go for it. I'm nervous to clear too. I haven't cleared in, uh, man, it might be three months now, which doesn't sound like a long time, but there's, there's an art to all this and I'm rusty. So wish me luck.
Okay, so that first coat was uh, really light. I like to do, I don't know if everyone does this or if it's just me, but uh, it's worked in the past. I do a real light coat, like dusted almost, and it looks terrible. Um, and that, that, from my experience, it makes it a little easier for it to not run. It gives it a little more of a surface to stick to. So uh, it's been about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go hit it with another coat. Um, so I usually do, I'll do that nice tack coat, is what I call it, or a dust coat, I don't know. And then uh, I'll do one medium coat and then another medium to heavy-ish to get that nice uh, finish that we want. So we're gonna do that now. So towards the end of, I guess, the amount of clear I have left in the gun, I'll triple check all the parts, make sure there are no dry spots, and then if I have any left, I just kind of shadow coat everything. Um, so that's just, say I did a medium coat and I have some left in the gun, I'll just kind of literally like shadow coat over everything and just give a little bit so it gets that nice thick gloss finish, but still being careful not to run the clear because that's, that's such a nightmare, such a huge pain in the butt. I, I am terrible at buffing, so if I run anything, I wet sand it down, and then I wet sand the whole part, and then I clear it again. <laughs> That's just because I, I can't get my buffing to look as good as some of these parts look right out of the gun, so I choose not to. So <laughs> uh, I've gotten better at not running the clear. I haven't in a while. I just jinxed myself, so now the Jeep Vet's going to have runs all over the place. But um, like as you can see, like that one turned out really good but uh i was on the verge of probably running it on that all right guys so all things considered everything turned out pretty sweet this thing turned out great clear laid really well all over it all the little parts turned out pretty snazzy that one turned out nice as well clear laid really good not too many dust marks on any of these which is really nice this one is glass I'm almost surprised that didn't run. That looks so thick. Yeah. So, uh, I guess that's a good batch for uh, being my last, technically. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry it's late. I'm a little uh, unenthusiastic, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with them. They turned out good. The intercooler pipe turned out great. Everything else turned out good. Floor pans turned out good. Um, my only concern with the floor pans is where I had to hold it on the on the ends. Um, where'd it go? Like that little black spot right there next to the hole. Right there, that little smudge. That's from where I had to hold it with my finger because there's no other way to hold it. But those are floor pans for the goat cart. So you usually clear bras those and they go on the floor, they get trashed. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Um, the intercooler pipe was for uh, another guy that uh, he messaged me at the right time. I'm like, bring it by i'm doing it now so we'll get it done so i'm glad that turned out well um the rest of it turned out good um i i really enjoy 
clear coating. I really enjoy painting. Um, it is just, it is a huge, I don't like doing it for money either. Like it's, if I'm doing it for me and I mess up, there's no stress. If I'm doing it for customers and I mess up, there's a lot of stress. I have to, it's a huge process to redo stuff like this. And I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm like not to sound cocky, but I mean, I'm good at it and I don't mess up often, but I have in the past and those memories are kind of stuck in my head. So, um, hopefully, you know, in the near future, we, uh, we're able to, you know, once the channel gets rolling, we can get a little bit bigger shop, uh, at a different location and set up a booth that's a little bit nicer. And, uh, I mean, if, if I'm not doing this for a business, then we should be able to, you know, if we're not painting every day, like I was, then it really shouldn't matter. Um, I don't know. I kind of miss it. I kind of don't, um, I'm looking forward to doing stuff on our cars, but you know, that'll be few and far between when I have nothing else to do, which is, uh, a long ways out. We have all kinds of, <laughs> all kinds of stuff to do. So, um, sorry for the delay of the Jeep. This is why basically this whole week was uh, shot. So sorry, I'm tired. I'm going home. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, if you guys are trying to do this at home, um, please let me know. I have no secrets to hide anymore. I used to be kind of stingy on telling people what and how I did it. But at this point I have zero intentions of making this my income for a living anymore. So if you guys have any questions, uh, the only thing I'm not going to tell you is where I get that carbon from because uh, I might, I don't know. It's good looking carbon. No one else has it. I'm one of very few people that even know where to find it. And I search long and hard for it. So, <laughs> but everything else, I'll tell you all the paints I use. I'll tell you the clear I use. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, next video should be of the Jeep. And then probably two, two, three more videos of the Jeep Max. And then it'll be painted. I do have a surprise for you guys. I got some doors. Um, buddy at the junkyard told me one was coming in. So I went and grabbed him. So lots of extra stuff to do on the Jeep now. So let me know what you think. We'll see you soon. Um, thank you guys for being patient and we'll see you later.